to today's lecture about social evolution. The basic question we will ask today is how technologies transform society and with that lead to a process of evolution of humankind, civilization and society. Um, in order to get a basic idea of how that works, let me tell you about the Khmer Empire. The Khmer was a civilization that dominated the area around what today is Cambodia for about 600 years, from 800 until 1400 after Christ. And it was a very successful civilization. They dominated an area which is, was three times bigger than today uh, is Cambodia, including parts of Vietnam and Thailand. And they created impressive buildings, for example, today's biggest religious site on earth. Angkor Wat was created by the Khmer Empire. What was their secret? Now their secret lay in something that was called Barayas. This is a water management system that stretched for about 1,200 square kilometers, about 500 square miles. And it provided a standardized solution to a typical need that they were having. It helped them to water rice fields. Before that, everybody was busy with taking care of its own subsistence by planting rice. So everybody had to basically work in agriculture. Once they came up with a standardized solution to the typical problem of how to water rice field, then they derived from knowledge about the world from the way how rice production works and how water flows, uh, a solution that they embedded into a physical structure, the water management system, they were able to liberate, liberate resources. So now not everybody had to work in rice production because all these people that before that were carrying bucket by bucket water to the fields, now they suddenly had a lot of time on their hand. What did they do with all their time of, on their hand? Well, some of them became creative, started drawing, became architects uh, and started to build these impressive buildings like Angkor Wat. Others had so much time on their hand that they became soldiers and started to invade other countries. Others became lawyers and started to make laws or politicians or priests. So civilization becomes possible because we have all this time on their hand, which allows us to liberate us from the mundane animal-like task of feeding ourselves. And this is done by automating some of our processes, by finding standardized solution to typical needs, which we derive from knowledge about the world and we embed it into a physical structure. To say it with the words of a famous economist, Friedrich Hayek, Civilization advances by extending the number of important operations which we can perform without thinking about them. So technology is much more than uh, toys for the boys. It is actually what drives, what enables civilization, what leads to human progress. And even nowadays also for development, if you look at the state of the art solutions to lift people out of poverty, to help societies to develop. Here's an example of a book by, written by uh, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Sachs. Uh, basically, if you really read it, what it says is that in order to reduce poverty, what you have to do is bring technology to developing countries. To boost agriculture, you have to install irrigation systems like the Khmer, storage bins, fertilizers. To improve health, we need ceramic stove, refrigeration, rainwater harvesting, water pumps, anti-malaria bed nets. To invest in education, we need lab material, we need computers, software apps, and we need a lot of general purpose technologies. For example, like electricity, motorization, digital technology, and so forth. So technology is much more than toys for the boys. Technology is what drives human progress. Based on this notion, it is then able to create a comprehensive theory of how the creation of surplus through technology leads to social evolution. And that's basically what we will talk about today.